I'm Matthew Gore from lightandmatter.org. Okay, I know there's no shortage of videos on YouTube about how to change eye color in Photoshop. For some reason, though, the other videos that I've seen on the subject have been strangely basic. Most of them don't even have audio commentary. So I'm going to quickly show you the easy way to change eye color, then show you how to easily adjust that color to whatever shade you want, then show you a couple of different methods for changing the colors of other stuff like clothes and furniture and that sort of thing. Before I jump into this, let me mention that this particular photo is not mine. It's a free stock photo that I downloaded from Dreams Time, and there's a download link in the description if you also want to download it and play with it as well. Anyway, to get started, first I'm going to zoom in on the eyes a little bit. Actually, as you get close, you can uh, see the beauty dish in her eyes there that was used to light her face. Looks a little creepy, actually. Now, down here in the Layers palette, create a new layer, make sure that it's selected, and choose a color for the eyes. I think I will go with uh, some kind of a green color. And then just go in and paint right over her irises. Okay, so now the eyes are painted in. And they look pretty awful, but part of that is because I did a sloppy job, and part of it we're about to fix. Now with the eye layer here selected in the Layers palette, I'm going to change this layer to a different blending mode. I'm going to change it, in this case, to Soft Light. And you can see that now you can see the texture through that color. There are actually a few different options here. Soft light usually works really well. Sometimes overlay works better. Here we get a more vibrant green. And sometimes hue and color are also useful options. And there are actually times when some of these other blend modes will work nicely too. For the moment, I'm going to switch back to overlay, but it's worth experimenting um, every now and then. Now I'm going to just zoom back out a little bit get the overall effect. And those eyes are pretty bright green. If you want to tone that down a little bit, all you have to do is scale down the opacity, or slide down the opacity here on the, the green eye layer. Now that looks kind of cool, but suppose you want to try it out with some different colors, and you don't want to choose a new paint color and paint over it and all of that. If you go over here to the Layers palette and create a Hue Saturation layer, and then, this is the important part, you make this a clipping layer. You can actually press this little icon here and that'll do the job. Or, you can hold down the Alt key, and when you mouse over the border between these two layers, it gives you this icon, you just press that, and it'll also make it a clipping layer. All that means is that now, this adjustment layer only affects the layer directly below it. That is the eyes. I'm going to zoom in on those eyes again. And when you slide the hue slider around, now we've got some crazy purple eyes, blue, green, etc. And it's as easy as that. And of course, if this were not a clipping layer, this is what would happen. Everything would change color, and who knows, that might be kind of cool looking too, but probably not the effect that we were originally going for. Actually, I'm just gonna move on to another image here. This is my sister's Great Dane puppy, and as you can see, there's a bright red, uh, it's a couch actually in the background, it's hard to tell what it is. And if I wanna change the color of that couch, I can actually do that without painting anything at all. Again, I'm going to create a hue saturation layer in the layers palette here. And then I'm going to go up to master and select reds. Um, now anything that I do will just affect the reds in this picture, but actually I can be more specific than that. I'm going to pick the exact reds that I want to be affected. So I'll pick sort of a medium one, and then add in 
some other darker and lighter shades. And now, when I change the hue slider, you can see that um, I can change that couch to whatever color I want. And of course, if I want it less saturated, I can desaturate or darken it, etc. And then if I want to change this little pink elephant to match, I can do the same thing. This time I will pick the magentas and again specifically choose the colors in this. I'm going to pick this sort of medium tone and then add in some of the darker ones and some of the lighter ones. And then I can change that hue so that the whole thing sort of coordinates. I'm going to undo that um, and I'll show you what happens if you, instead of picking the magentas, if you picked the yellows, but then still got the eyedropper and selected this particular color, then it automatically selects magentas for you. So you don't have to know exactly what hues you're going to be selecting. All right, let me just show you one last method on a different picture. Now suppose I want to just edit these orange jackets and maybe this reddish orange up in the truck. I can do the same sort of thing by going up to the select menu and then picking color range. And then I'll use my dropper tool and I'll start uh, selecting an orange. And then I can add on to that orange. And you get a little preview in here of what you're managing to select. In addition to just adding in colors with the dropper, you can also increase the fuzziness and it'll select some colors that are surrounding the ones that you have selected. So you see when I push this up, I get some extra selected areas down here in the water and won't overdo it. And now these colors are selected and you can see them in marching ants. And now if I make a new adjustment layer, like a, maybe I'll try a black and white. And you can see that since those areas were already selected when I created this adjustment layer, that selection gets put into the layer mask. And I'm actually going to invert this by pressing Control I. Now it is completely black and white except for those oranges. So that's an easy way to do a selective black and white image. And uh, I guess that's about it. I will stop here. I hope that some of you found this useful. If you have any questions, feel free to ask me, either here or on my website, lightandmatter.org. Don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel so you don't miss my future videos. And thanks for watching. <laughs>